Today we're in the prophet Zephaniah chapter 1. His name means hidden. I think one of the reasons that's his name is at a young age, he was born during the time of one of the most wicked kings, Manasseh. And many believe because of his lineage, and I'll read that in a minute, that he was hidden away as a child so they'd not be destroyed. So it's Yahweh hides. That's the name, Zephaniah. Listen to verse 1. The word of the Lord which came to Zephaniah, the son of Cushi, the son of Gadiah, the son of Amariah, the son of Hezekiah, in the days of Josiah, the son of Ammon, king of Judah. So he's a son of Hezekiah, at least that's part of the lineage. So he comes from royalty, but he's also a prophet. Verse 2, I will utterly consume everything from the face of the land, says the Lord. I'll consume man, beast, birds of the heavens, fish of the sea, uh, stumbling blocks along with the wicked. I will cut off man from the face of the land, says the Lord. It's like, man, God's going to clean house. He's He's coming after Judah. They've once again fallen into sin. And God says, I'm going to, I'm going to take it all down. And maybe they're thinking, well, God's going to judge the world. But then he gets very specific. I will stretch out my hand against Judah and against all the inhabitants of Jerusalem. I will cut off every trace of Baal from this place. The names of the idolatrous priests with the pagan priests, those who worship the host of heavens from the housetops, those who worship and swear oaths by the Lord, who also swear by Milcom, those who've turned back from following the Lord and have not sought the Lord nor inquired of him. So it's a totally backslidden state that God wants to deal with. And, and let me just say a few words about that. People can get complacent. They fall into ruts. They they back away from what feeds them and helps them grow. And God never becomes complacent. So as they distance himself, God presses in. And that's part of the story here of Zephaniah. God, God's going to clean house. He, he says this some interesting thing about them in, in verse 7. Be silent in the presence of the Lord, for the day of the Lord is at hand. For the Lord has prepared a sacrifice. He has invited his guests. And it shall be in the day of the Lord's sacrifice that I'll punish the princes and the king's children. All such are clothed with foreign apparel. In the same day, I'll punish those who leap over the threshold, who fill their master's houses with violence and deceit. It's an interesting verse that says that are clothed with foreign apparel. What's going on is they, they want to be like the other nations. They want to dress like them. They want to act like them. And it, it's a parallel we can see in Christianity. Oh, I want to be as close to the world as I can. I want to do this. I want to do that. I want to be like my unsaved friends. And so the Lord is calling out Israel from drifting away, becoming placent, not following the Lord, and he's going to deal with them. And here's the final verse. He says, Neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them in the day of the Lord's wrath. But the whole land shall be devoured by the fire of his jealousy, for he will make speedy riddance of all those who dwell in the land. So Zephaniah 1 is an amazing chapter of how God deals with those who walk in hypocrisy, who want to pretend one thing and live another, and not even their money will save them or secure them from God's hand dealing with their lives.